PlayStation is finally getting VRR. The Xbox Series X and S are selling extremely well in 2022, and Microsoft is launching the ID at Azure program. So VRR has been a feature on Xbox for a very long time now, and it's proven that on consoles with games that have lots of FPS stuttering or just have certain issues that can be easily smoothed out with the feature, it's a very great thing to have. Now, PlayStation had announced that it was coming over to the PlayStation 5, but they were kind of silent on the update for a very long time. But just today, they put out a new update for PlayStation and have announced that VRR will be coming in the coming months. So VRR is a feature helps sync the refresh rate to the display of your console's graphical output and reduces visual artifacts, screen tearing, and frame pacing issues. And Sony mentions here, gameplay in many PS5 titles feel smoother as scenes render instantly, graphics look crisper, and input lag is reduced. Previously released PS5 games can be fully optimized for VRR through a game patch, and future games may include VRR support at launch. So you see here what they're going to do for the update. They're going to add the VRR feature there that will be able to be used automatically on games that support it, but they will also be adding a toggle for you to apply the VRR feature to unsupported games that you can use at your own risk, I guess, because they also warn that it may result in unexpected visual effects if the game doesn't support the feature. So they say in the coming months, this will be coming. We don't know an exact release date, so it's a Finally, great that they did talk about it though, and that if you are a PS5 owner, you can be expecting the launch of VRR. All right, let's jump over here to sales comparisons. Now, this has been a very interesting year, 2022, where we've seen just kind of like a complete flip of the console that is selling more, and it seems like it is the Xbox Series X and S. Now, this is from VG Charts. I'm never really sure where VG Charts gets their information from, especially with the Xbox Series X and S, I'll be completely honest, because Xbox doesn't really release their sales numbers, but these are their rough estimations, I guess, as to where these consoles lie in terms of overall sales. And 2022 has been a great year for Xbox. They continue to sell more than they did in 2021. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with them increasing their production but it's so far been very successful. So we look here, 2021, we can see the year to date sales comparison. So the same periods were covered for both 2021 and 2022. And last year, this time in 2021, PlayStation 5 was 2 million consoles sold, almost a million ahead of the Xbox Series X and S. And then we look here at 2022 and the Xbox Series X and S is up about 100,000 units over the PlayStation 5, a 1.4 million versus 1.3 million. Now, what's very interesting about this as well is we can see here that the Series X and S out of the PS5, the Series X and S, and the Nintendo Switch is the only console that's actually up year to date, 2022 versus 2021, actually up 36%. So more people are purchasing the Series X and S in 2022 than they did in 2021. And there's a couple of reasons for this, I would think. One, obviously supply. If they've increased their supply, it's more available. People are going to be going out and purchasing it. The console has now been out for almost two years and people are being aware of the great things of the Xbox Series X and S and Game Pass and something like the Xbox Series S with the pricing of that. And just, I mean, it's a great console. Plus you get access to Game Pass with it, which just you have unlimited games. And when you see what they're doing with the things like the Fortnite advertising, they're going to continue to do things like that in the future. I expect something along those lines with the Call of Duty franchise when it, once it officially becomes a part of Microsoft, so that's gonna further push consoles. But I think all of those business decisions are finally coming into their own, and you're seeing the results in the actual sales numbers. And then we look at the actual market share from the different periods from 2021 and 2022, and you can see it's much closer right now compared to 2021, whereas Xbox is ahead with 22.8% of the market share in terms of sales, again, in the same period covered between this year and last year. But overall, I think it's it's very successful right now for Xbox. These numbers are probably very happy with not only are they increasing their sales as they're increasing their supply and increasing their output, but 
overall, in terms of market share, in terms of install base, they are also gaining on that. And I think overall, by the end of this generation, the total number of console sales between the PlayStation 5 and the Series X and S will be extremely close. And what is the, I guess, cherry on top of the cake for Xbox and for Microsoft with something like this is that console and hardware sales isn't even their main, I guess, business model. What they want to do is increase the amount of people who subscribe to Xbox Game Pass. And this is just an additional way to get people into that ecosystem. So it helps out their overall numbers. So Microsoft has announced the launch of a very exciting program if you're an indie developer and it's called the ID at Azure program and it's for developing games through the cloud. Now, what this is, is it is a platform agnostic tool that lets developers create games for console, PC, mobile devices, and virtual reality, which I mean, very cool, giving them access to these tools to be able to create games from multiple platforms, meaning more people are gonna have the chance to try out their games. And if you're a part of this program, you actually get a free Azure PlayFab standard plan, which provides you access to the PlayFab party services, live ops party services, as well as many other tools. Now with this program, you're getting access to the pre-built game development virtual machine in Azure that has several different development tools pre-installed, which I'm assuming just kind of takes a big load off of the actual PCs that you would need to be able to make these games. I mean, I'm not an indie developer. I'm not really sure how much they need, how expensive that type of stuff is, but I'm guessing something like this, where you're doing it through the cloud will just take off a lot of the actual resources that you're going to have to go out and spend and buy for yourself. So if you're an indie developer, you're somebody out there who's interested in this, the actual Microsoft Azure game development virtual machine is now in public preview and allows game creators just to quickly right away, I guess, jump into development because of the tools that are provided through the cloud. So the solutions that are currently available will be Virtual Studio, Community Edition, Unreal Engine, Quixel Bridge, Perforce, P4V Client, Parsec, Incredibuild, Blender, Teradici, DirectX, GDK, Playfabs, STKs, and more. So there's lots of stuff here. I don't really understand what most of this means, but from my perspective, seeing this, reading about it, seems like it's just a great program, a great solution for somebody who's out there who maybe can't afford the stuff's needed to create big games. They don't have the time or resources to be able to go out, set up a workstation, set up an office and start making games, but they have some great ideas. They understand how to create games. This could be a great way to do it through the cloud, leveraging the resources of Azure, saving lots of costs. And hey, we may get some really awesome games that come out of this ID at Azure program. And this just goes more to, I guess, democratizing video games, something that Xbox has talked about in many ways with just their overall cloud service, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and like this will add on to it by giving access to more people to create video games. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on PS5 finally getting VRR in the next coming months, the Xbox Series X and S sales in 2022. And what do you think about this idea as Azure program? Do you think this is going to lead to more interesting and creative games coming out? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. You're new here. You like what you saw, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.